All that and more we shall discuss now with our old pal Don Davis, who's here to discuss this exciting news. Hello, Don. How are you? I'm back. <laughs> You're back. We love having I'm you back. on. Yes, we enjoy this. Seize the throne. Heavy lies the crown. <laughs> PFL versus Bellator champs. I love it. I love it. Congratulations. Uh, could I ask off the bat, was it hard to put this together? You know, your last card wasn't that long ago. The acquisition, not that long ago. But here you are with a lot of big names, four champion versus champion bouts. Was this tough to put together in such a short amount of time? Yes and no. Yes, because of the compressed time frame. We really weren't able to put it together until the first week of January. We weren't able to start until then. That's when we were able to work with our Saudi Arabian partners with a date to start to lock it down. So very, very short, two weeks. No, because we had abundance of top talent. You and I talked when I sat in your studio. We now have 85 fighters ranked in the top 25 of the world. Collectively, we had 22 world champions now under the PFL and Bellator umbrella. So because we had an abundance of talent, we could put on a great card, even with, call it, two weeks of notice and only six weeks to put on the fight. So a lot of work to be done kind of over that early holiday period, but we're thrilled, thrilled with this card. Okay, I was just going to ask you, uh, overall, are you happy with what you came up with? More than happy. Why? The A-plus is ahead of the A. (laughs) Two reasons. Um, And everybody really on, on... social media and and a lot of even the blogs, you know, yesterday I was interested, you know, I took three hours and I read a lot more than I normally read. And I went a lot deeper than I normally read because I want to understand what a lot of different fan factions were saying about the card. And people said, this is exactly what I would have hoped for with all this talent and the two organizations coming together. They didn't give us three or four pay-per-view events. They didn't parse it out. They really heavied it up. So that's why we're really happy. When we sat down, we said, what's every single fight we could give MMA fans? If you don't see it on this card, you know why it's not on this card? Injury, conflict. Mm. Injury, conflict. We held nothing back for fans. So we're delighted how it came together. You know, I'm always curious as well as to how the fans feel about news and whatnot, especially when I'm hearing about things, you know, a couple of weeks out. And I have to say, and, and I think you know this to a degree, um, when you're not the UFC, the fans, especially on Twitter and social media, can be a little harsh, right? Because they've been supporting the UFC for so long. I was kind of blown away by the response yesterday. I don't recall a Bellator announcement or even a PFL announcement, if I'm being 100% honest, met with such positivity and enthusiasm over the last few years. Did you feel the same way? Did you, did you sense that excitement and positivity? And were you expecting that? I agree 100% with exactly your take, Ariel, on what people were saying. I think even some people who had not been PFL fans yet um, were saying, damn, got to give it to them. You know, these were some of their comments. And some people who had been PFL fans said, wow, they outdid themselves. And some people who have been Bellator fans or a little bit worried said, hey, this is going to work out. So I, I think whatever perspective you came from, current fan, skeptical, or not yet a fan, you moved up two or three notches in terms of interest and certainly respect. And that's what we we're trying to do. All we're trying to tell fans is MMA is big. Man, there's 650 million fans out there. UFC puts on a great product. We put on a different and unique great product. Check it out. It's not either or. This ain't Coke or Pepsi. PFL is doing a whole different thing. And we're doing a whole different thing for fans and a whole different thing for fighters. And I think yesterday people started to get that vibe. And we hope with this card, those who have not yet been PFL fans, come check it out. Considering this is such a big card for you guys, and it's uh, it's been so well received, any consideration to not putting it on pay-per-view so that the most amount of people in the world, and especially here in America, can see it? Yes, that wasn't possible. You know, also, collectively with our partners, ESPN pay-per-view, DAZN pay-per-view, uh, and the General Entertainment Authority of Saudi Arabia, 
that was a necessary part of the puzzle. This card is unbelievably expensive. The most expensive card ever put on in the history of Bellator or PFL. Hmm. Bellator put on over 300 events. PFL, we put on over 120 events. 420 cards. Wow. This is the most expensive by far ever put on. So this was kind of a necessary in terms of the uh, economic model and the positioning of the PFL super fight division going forward. Are you are you confident, you know, afternoon card, there's a lot of competition right around this time. There's a UFC event later on. There's a bunch of pay-per-views people are being asked to spend. It's, you know, it's kind of funny. I know you're a sports fan as well. I know you're a football fan. Saw a lot of people bellyaching about uh, Peacock having exclusive rights to that Chiefs Dolphins game. I was like, wow, these people aren't fight fans. You know, they're being asked to spend five dollars to watch one NFL <laughs> game, and and you know, MMA and boxing and combat fans have to spend a lot. Uh, are you confident that you'll be able to recoup and that this will be a profitable venture? First of all, congratulations to you and your bills. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, as many people may not know, I'm a huge Bengals fan. Yes, and I know Ariel's a huge Bills fan. Um, so we're both not yet in the promised land. Right. And right. so I'll root for you this year. Thank you. Um, so for us, pay-per-view is one of the economic models, but just one. The number of buys fits into one of the economic models. For PFL also, we need to establish our new super fight division. We're only having two fights each year in the pay-per-view super fight division. That has a different platform for fighters like Francis Naganu like Jake Paul, like Kayla Harrison, like Chris Cyborg. There are fighters who fight differently. There's brands that sponsor differently. There's partners that get involved differently with that caliber of event. So we're going to have two a year. And we've always said we want those two a year to be as premium as anything you've ever seen on planet Earth, whether it's from UFC or otherwise. We believe we've accomplished that with this kind of fight card. I don't think it's any coincidence that the UFC March 2nd event was canceled the day before our fight event. Those who know MMA said that is not a mega event. That is not worthy of being hosted in Saudi Arabia. That is a poor fight quality card the UFC put forth on March 2nd. Could UFC load up a card and have a mega card? They could. Do they do it that often? They don't. We're going to do it every time we do it. And so our partners who are host partners, like Saudi Arabia, our partners who are pay-per-view partners like DAZN or ESPN+, Plus, they know they can count on us for these two fights a year. Best of the best of the best. So that's how we're thinking about it in terms of the business model going forward. Was it some kind of moral victory for you and the team that the day after the news comes out that uh, this UFC card in Saudi Arabia was being moved to later in the year, in June, what I'm hearing, uh, your news comes out on Tuesday and it's met with great enthusiasm. Did you feel like that was a, a victory for, as you put it, the, 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 the co-leader in MMA? We know what we're doing. Um, Guns N' Roses knows the music they're playing. They're in the, they're in the whiskey bar for five years until there's the, the big Use Your Illusion album. <laughs> and, and everybody knows that they hit it big. It takes a while to build companies. So, for example, we know Fight Matrix, which many of your fans who are big time fans will know Fight Matrix. It's the only really recognized independent way of ranking fighters. We know that the PFL fight cards are equal to the UFC fight cards, non-pay-per-view on TV. So if you turn in PFL on Friday night or UFC on Saturday night, they're equal. But most fight fans say, nah, that can't be. UFC's better fighters. It takes time for brands to build. For example, Ariel, this fight card, the fight matrix rankings are 14. For the whole card, not the co mains we can't find another fight card in the history since they've been tracking them that it's that high of quality. That's the seven main fight cards, taking all 14 fighters. But most fighters would still say, hey, I don't know if this is as good as a UFC pay-per-view. Should I buy it, right? So we know what we're doing to serve fans. It takes time for that brand to get built. So we have to keep doing what we're doing, stay super positive, stay fan-focused, stay fighter-first, and it'll all work out. 
when I think of PFL versus Bellator, the first fight that comes to mind is Chris Cyborg versus Kayla Harrison. Why isn't that on this card? We want it to be. Um, two reasons. Kayla Harrison and Chris Cyborg. <laughs> Kayla, injury. Then Cyborg didn't want to fight Pinchenko. So there's only one person here who was ready, whether they were fighting Ariel or <laughs> Kayla or, right, Pinchenko. She was the sport in all of this. Hey, I'll let Kayla fight Chris. Hey, I'll fight Chris. Hey, I'll fight February 19th. I'll fight January 3rd. So Larissa was the real champ in this. Um, we would have liked to put some fight together to have the top women represented on here on the champs v. champs format. Not possible. Um, injury, schedules, conflicts, um, opinions. But that fight's going to happen. The great news, that fight's going to happen. Kayla has one more fight under a contract because she was injured, could take this fight. Chris under contract, four more fights, lifetime. That fight is going to happen. Kayla wants to fight Chris. Chris wants to fight Kayla. That fight's going to happen. So will it be the summer? Most likely. Will it be the co-main on probably Francis's first pay-per-view fight with us? Probably. So great, great news. Don't get it February 24th, but fans are going to get it this summer. So, um, the Kayla thing is interesting because when she fought for you guys in late November, she had said that that was her last fight because it was either the number of fights or the term. You're now saying something different. You're saying she was hurt and she owes you one fight. So is she on board with this? Does she does she agree with this assessment of the contract? I believe so. Okay. But it is what it is. It is what it is, yes. Okay, so you are confident she will fight for you one more time? 100%. Are you hoping to resign her after that one time, or do you think there's only one? We fight are, left? we are, and on this one, I, uh, I love Kayla not only as a fighter but as a leader and as a person. Um, we have an offer on the table for her. We've had an offer on the table for her for three months. Huge offer would make her the highest paid woman in MMA ever. We've told her if she wants to stay, we'd love to have her. I'm the kind of um, person who is not only direct, but very authentic and honest with my feelings. So I don't like to put fighters down or hide in the weeds, right? We want people. We want them here. We'd love to have her here. And she knows that. But we said, take all the time you need. You can do the one more cyborg fight and then decide. We don't play games and say, you can't get this fight unless you renew with us like other people do. Mm. You know, we're very, we're very on the table. This is your offer. You can take this at any time. It won't go up. It won't go down will treat you with the utmost respect. Like that's why fighters don't leave us. And that's why we're fighting, you know, winning over more and more fighters in the, in the marketplace. That's the kind of respect I want when I'm looking for a new job. So that's the kind of respect we give them. So she has a huge offer from us. She could end her career with us. She could become an executive. She could come an on-air talent with us. We would like her to lead a major part of our women's product going forward after she's done fighting. It's up to her to decide how she wants to do that. But what we do know is we're going to get Kayla Harrison versus Chris Cyborg this summer. Um, and one last thing on Chris. She's boxing this weekend. How do you feel about that? And if she didn't have that on the books, do you think she would have taken the Larissa fight? I don't know. Um, I'm super happy that Chris is here. I don't know her as well as, as I know some other of her fighters is, is a person. Um, so I don't know that. I think she's new to PFL. I think we're building a relationship uh, of trust with her in terms of how we work with her, the, uh, the same relationship we built with other fighters. So it's hard for me to answer that, to be honest. Okay. Um, the only, like I said, met with great enthusiasm and excitement. The only other name that people said, oh, I wish he was on this, was Patchy Mix. Was there any attempt to put him on the card, the 135-pound champion? Yes. Could not get the right matchup. Okay. That would be awesome. 100%. Um, by the way, we try to get Brendan on this card also. Brendan Lockman. Brendan is yeah, Brendan Lockman injured, couldn't okay. do it. So if there is somebody you wish you could have seen, believe me, injury or conflict. Fair you enough. Know, couldn't get ready. Um if there was anybody who was ever a Bellator champion, as long as you've been alive, that you would want to see, if there was anybody who's ever a PFL champion, this card would have had nine, not seven. Okay. You know, so we've got you know, eight current champions, six former champions. It would add more. Um, you're getting everything you could possibly get. And to me, the other thing that we didn't talk about, 
get ready for this every year. Okay. This will become an annual event. Um, the fighters were so excited when we reached out to them. The potential partners were so excited. And now that we've seen how big it can come together, every year in the Bellator Champion Series, as you know, we have eight fights a year. They'll be fighting and trying to retain belts all year. The PFL League season, 10 events, crown a champion every year. So around this time every year, each February, look for champs v. champs. Heavy lies the crown, <laughs> seize the throne. I love it. That is very exciting. People love that sort of thing. Uh, one interesting nugget that we didn't talk about, it's uh, it's three five-minute rounds, so there's no 25-minute fight, right? These champ v. champ fights, and elbows are allowed. Uh, can I ask why no 25 minutes, and why are you cool with elbows for this card? Yeah, you asked me about elbows when I was in your studio, and I said, really, it's about the season format, right? The season format can't happen. Uh, quote, unquote, the NFL season can't sustain itself, if you allow that. But everything else, we were going to look at product by product basis. So our pay-per-view super fight, of which this is one, elbows. The Bellator Champion Series, elbows. Um, so full, full out in those two products. In terms of... Um, you know, everything else, you know, the PFL Europe season, PFL Mideast, those are all seasons. So no elbows in those. Okay. And uh, why did you choose to do 50-minute fights and not 25-minute fights for champion versus champion? We thought, well, one, very short notice mm. for everybody preparing, better for fighters. We also thought more interesting for fans, right? This is a really heavy card, really stacked card. We thought the pacing would be much better. Okay. Fair enough. Um by the way, how are things going as far as finding a new TV home for Bellator? Very good. Uh, what I can tell you, we, we're, we, we're down to three, oh. and it'll be better distribution than Bellator had, Okay. both U.S. and international. I think we'll be able to announce it uh, by the end of February, so a full month before the season, the champion series starts. Um, and it will be more premium, meaning uh, more expansive. More people will be able to see it with better distribution, better reach, both U.S. and international. Do you know when the first Bellator event is going to be? We do. Um, we haven't announced that yet, but it will be in March. That's no, when no the better calendar time than will now. Start. Go ahead. You can announce oh, it right here. Come on. I, yeah, you know, I don't want to overstock your show. Okay, I don't want to overstimulate yeah. the viewership. That's fine. That's um, fine. But it will start in March, and it, there will be approximately one event a month and eight total events. And as I told you, the most exciting thing is every single fight has two championship fights. Both co-mains are both for belts. Um, so this will be cards that will surprise people also in terms of everything is, hey, that's a high quality fight. That is not filler. So some people said Bellator will have less events than they did before. True, but you are gonna see better fights, better production. I love that. Um, and, and just curious, uh, could you tell us city country that this event will take place in or not yet? Yeah, sure. Well, I'll tell you this. We're going to have six of the events international okay. and two events in the United States. So you're going to have eight great cities of the world, eight different cities, eight different events, six international, two U.S. Is there going to be any PFL or Bellator event this year that fans in the United States won't be able to see like last year with PFL Europe? No. So if there is a PFL Europe this year, we'll be able to see it here? Well, PFL Europe, um, we're still working on. Okay. So the international leagues, we're still finalizing U.S. distribution. We have rest of world distribution. But for PFL league season, ESPN, yeah. all Friday nights will be announced very soon. Friday nights. All prime time, huge. And it'll be simulcast, ESPN main channel and ESPN Plus. Wow. So bigger, broader distribution for the ESPN league season than ever before. So call it a nice upgrade from ESPN from even the previous year, um, where we had some Thursdays, some Fridays, um, some ESPN two, some main, it's all now Friday and all now ESPN main. And then Bellator, uh, once again, we'll have all uh, mostly Fridays and some Saturdays, all Fridays and Saturdays. So you're now gonna have really 18 premium events on Fridays and Saturdays, plus two, pay-per-view events, plus about 15 international series. So this year, we're going to produce between 35 and 38 
shows in 2024, double the number of 2023 for fans. As you know, the big uh, story of last week was Francis Ngannou getting the Anthony Joshua fight. And the reaction was met with great excitement, but there's a lot of people now saying, I don't know if he's ever going to fight in MMA, let alone PFL, ever. Do you feel confident that he will fight for you this year? I have no worry about my partner being too successful. <laughs> this is like having a brother that's like too rich and is not going to like take you out to Cabo on his private plane. Right? You right. Know? Could, could I be so lucky to have this brother, right? I love our partner, Francis Nagano, being so successful. I love it. Um, do I have any worries about him fighting for us? No. Is it going to take longer to schedule? Sure. Do we have to get his opponent way better? Of course. But is that going to make the fight even more exciting? 100%. So um, Francis' success makes our task of getting him an opponent harder. But it's going to make his fight even bigger for PFL. So it will happen 100%. Because maybe there's a world he knocks out Anthony Joshua and then Saudi says we want him to fight the winner of Usyk Fury just from a timing perspective, right? Sure. So even play, I always like to say, oh, what's the worst case scenario here? My brother says, I'm going to take you on the G5 to Cabo, but I can't do it until March 2025. And you go, nah, I just want to take my own win Winnebago to the, no, you wait until February 2025. Hey, okay. so worst case scenario, we have the biggest fight in MMA in February of 2025 with Francis. That's our worst case scenario. Sign me up. Okay. That we have the greatest fighter in the world? Sign me up for that. That he shocked boxing and he's opening up PFL Africa for us. And then he, he signed me up for that. So everybody always likes to look at the, at the bad stuff here. To me, um, they always talk about also, you don't have any opponents for him. UFC doesn't have any opponents for him. There's only one guy in the world. I said this to you like six months ago, John Jones. There's only one opponent for Francis Nagato in the world, John Jones. Now, will La Problemo and Bader convince all of us that they could fight maybe Francis? Let's see. I don't know. Who in the heck knows? But if nobody else at UFC is any more compelling than those two guys, it's all just blah, 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 blah. It's John Jones or nobody. You know, all this UFC heavyweight back and forth. Bader and Love Problemo is a better fight than anything over there. But none of it is John Jones, Francis Nagano. That's a one-of-one -one bespoke custom heavyweight fight. Francis is now in that league. He is above everything. By the way, is there any scenario where, because uh, we've seen what he's done in boxing, His Excellency, Turkey Al Sheikh, says to you in the UFC, hey, we're partners, I want Jones versus Nganu. Has that come up? It has not come up. If it had come up, I wouldn't breach confidence and tell you. Fair. Um, but you know what? Like as an entrepreneur, as an innovative guy, seeing what Turkey's done, I don't, I would be shocked to not see that happen. Yeah. I'd rather see that than uh, five versus five. Sure. But just <laughs> look know, what he's doing. He's getting, he's getting Eddie Hearn and Frank yeah. Warren, who hate each other, sitting at the table singing Kumbaya. Why can't he make this happen? I bet he can. Okay. I wouldn't bet against Turkey. I wouldn't bet one penny against Turkey, <laughs> <laughs> let alone more than that. So to me, when the biggest things in the world get bigger, because that's what's happening. The biggest thing was Francis and John Jones. Then it got bigger because Francis now is better. And Francis now is more excited. So the biggest thing got bigger. Sometimes that puts so much pressure, the crucible busts. And it busts in such a way that great things happen. That's how great companies get built. That's how great Super Bowl teams get made, as you know. Just things bust. I just think in 2025, things could happen that we can't imagine today. Wow. Okay, last question, and it's probably the most important one to me. We know PFL has uniforms. What happens in this super fight card? Does Bellator have to wear a uniform too, or could those guys go rogue and wear whatever they want? Because that would be fun. Well, if they can go rogue, PFL can go rogue. Oh. Is that, is right. that what's happening? So, um, you know, okay. I didn't tell you what was happening, uh, okay. right? But I, I'm just saying, 
we the rules got to be fair. Okay. So and and part of this is keep in mind this is a pay per view super fight, our yeah. very first one. This is not a league season. This is not a Bellator Champion Series event. This is a pay per view super fight. We want personalities to show. Oh. This is a pay per view super fight. So what you're going to see in terms of production, what you're going to see in terms of announcers, what you're going to see in terms of music. This is a pay-per-view super fight, our very first one. You're going to see some different stuff. I love it. Okay. That's a nice uh, old-fashioned tease. Uh, Always appreciate these chats. Enjoy them very much. Thank you, Don. Congrats to you and the team, and looking forward to February 24th. Thank you so much, Ariel. Appreciate being back. All right. There he is, Don Davis. Exciting stuff in the world of PFL. And thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.